Hello everyone, this is another video and in this video we will talk about Spark SQL. In this video what we will do is we will take query from week 4 about revenue calculation and we will use Spark for executing this query. We will use the data that we prepared in the previous video but as I said the previous video was optional. What you can do is you can just execute these two files. So the first one is for downloading the data. You need to execute it for yellow and green taxi for 2020 and 21. And then you need to execute this file, which would turn CSV files into parquet files. You don't have to actually execute this particular notebook. So if you don't do this, if you want to use the CSV files instead of parquet, just be sure that you use schema here to avoid any unpleasant surprises. If you use the same schema, then things should hopefully work. Let me close this and let's start. So I want to create a new notebook. So I will call it something like 06 Spark SQL. And then I will start with the usual import like we do. So I will import by Spark, will import Spark session and I will create a session. Now we should have master UI available for us. Great. And now I want to load the green and yellow uh, data sets with taxi tips that we have for 2020 and 2021 as well. From that, I'll do Spark read Parquet because we already have this data in Parquet and it will be data Parquet. Uh, for example green and what we can do here if we want to read both 2020 and 21 we can just use star here but then because it has this nested structure because inside a year we have months i need to use star slash star and then it will go into subfolders and then this will be data set green and for data set green just use show um, so this is uh, what we have and if i do print schema uses schema from the parquet file and I will do the same thing with yellow taxis yellow taxis for yellow taxis um, it's very similar and now if I look at this query uh, I see that uh, yeah so it uses trips data which is a combination of both yellow and green so I want first to combine these two data frames into one and uh, we see that uh, let me print again data frame green print schema so we see that some fields are the same so for example we have this congestion uh, supercharge I don't know fair amount uh, and so on in both cases but in some cases for example we do not have this ehl p so what I want to do now is I want to select fields that both data frames have and use only them so each data frame has this columns field that shows what exactly we have there columns and we can just take a look at what is common between these two sets of columns and just keep them so the easiest way of doing this would be to use set and then to look at the intersection between two sets for that uh, we need to do something like this so it means uh, and so things that live both in this set and in this set and we see that these are the columns that both data sets have which is a good start but what i see is they don't have pick up time and drop off time and the reason for that if we do if we go to green columns it's l pep pick up time and for yellow i think it's something else it's t pep pick up time i don't know why it's different but what we can do is we can just rename these columns we can use this uh, special function with column renamed and uh, yeah, let's start with green so for green instead of frame green columns and it's lpep so first yeah the current one and then the new name so we'll just call it pick up date time and i will do the same thing but for drop off so drop off will be uh, drop off and i will just write it back to the data frame green okay i don't need that one and now if i look at green columns this is different now so let me remove that and i will do the same thing with yellow data frame yellow and there so let me again take a look at yellow columns it's tpep so i need to replace l with t and then i would just execute that and here now we have a drop of data time and pick up and i see that actually the order now is 
different. If I look at the columns here, so it starts with vendor ID and then you see it, uh, I think it's sorted. It starts with D with capital letters. I want to preserve the order of it uh, the same as here. So for that, what I will do is I will go for each column from the green data set. I will look if this is already in the yellow data set and then I will just create common columns. So it will be an empty list and I will go for each column over each column in the green data set. Let me have this one. So yellow columns and then if column is in this yellow, then I will append to this common columns. Something like this. And then, yeah, now the order is preserved. So this is the same order. And we have this pickup, date time, drop of date time. So things look good. And now we want to select these things from both data sets. So for that, we use select, data frame green, select common columns. And then remember, so now I can show you. It selects, it's like select and then list of columns, like we do in SQL. And when we combine these two data sets, we need to know where exactly each record comes from, whether it comes from green data set or yellow. This is what service type is. So I will do it with column, and then I will name it service type. And then I'll just do green. Oh, okay, yeah, I think I need to use, I need to use from PySpark SQL, I need to use a function, import functions as capital F, and the function I need to use here is lit, which is literal. Now it works, yeah, so now we, we have this service type, a new column, and then I'll call this data frame green, oh, let's call it cell, select it, I don't know, I don't have a better name right now. And then... Um, I will do the same thing with yellow, yellow, and service type in this case will be yellow. So now we can, I don't know, combine them into one and we can call this tips data. So I will call it also data frame tips data, which will be a union of data frame green selected, union all data frame yellow selected. So now it will be both data frames combined into one. We can maybe do something like group by the service type and then do count. It should be a string. Yeah, of course, we need to also, uh, this is a lazy operation, so it returns another data frame. So to actually trigger the execution, we need to do show. And now it counts how many records of each service type we have. And we see it here. Of course, we haven't really used SQL so far. Now we can see how to use SQL for querying this data. And in Spark, there is this thing called SQL. And we can write a query here. Select star from. And now we have this from. Like what exactly can we put here? So we cannot put the name of the data frame. I don't think we can. But let me try. It will say, okay, I don't know what it is. So what we need to do is we need to tell Spark that this data frame is a table. And for that, we do data frame dot register temporary table. And we can call this table, for example, trips data. Now, if we do this thing, now, yeah, we can do show. And then it will actually access this data frame and it will do something with this. For example, we can do count. And what else? Yeah, service type count from tips data group by service type, right? And then the result should be exactly the same as we had here. Uh, let me execute it. We have the, exactly the same result. Well, the name is a little bit different, but this is the same result. Okay, now we have that. Let me execute this query. I will edit this slightly, so I will open Visual Studio Code and I'll use capital here, here, also I'll replace everything as capital, we don't need this node here, and here everything will be capital. Ehail fee, I think this is specific to green data set, so I will just remove it. Okay, I'll also do that, average, okay, then we select it from trips data, and then group by one, two, three, and we can also just explicitly say that we want to group by the revenue zone, then revenue month, and service type. 
So this will be the query that we will execute. So let me copy this and paste it here. And I will call this data frame result. So it will not do show. It complains about something. Can it resolve revenue zone? Maybe let me just try to group by one, two, three. And trip ID. Mm, I don't know what trip ID is. I'll just remove that. Okay, seems to work. Now let me just do data frame result show. This will be doing things for each month. Because we loaded the data for many years at the same time, we think probably can just execute it for every month separately. But here, just for the sake of doing this, we can yeah, do this for the entire month. Yeah, so for each revenue zone for each month, we have these statistics right now. What we can do with these results is just save this. So we can do data frame result, write parquet, and we can specify a location like data process, maybe data report. And here we can say maybe revenue, something like this. Well, ideally, we would do this for each year separately, but because I already do this for 2020 and 21, I will just do this and then execute this. And now we can go to our Spark the master UI and then see what it's actually doing. So there are 215 tasks, five of them are running and there are multiple stages. Let's click on this to see what exactly is going on here. And here you see that there are two things that are combined. So one of them is our yellow taxi data frame and the other one is green taxi data set. This whole stage code again is when we add new columns and do things like that. And then we combine them into one and then uh, we do some other things. Yeah, maybe this date trunk or things like this. Yeah, and then we also here do group by and maybe in one of the other lessons we will talk how it's implemented, but internally it writes data to some temporary locations and it waits till all the executors finish this and then it starts the next stage and then in the next stage it gets all these temporary results and puts them together. And then I think it does some extra post-processing and then saves the results to Parquet. And let's see. Yeah, it actually finished while I was talking about this. So the data should be here. And if I, oh, let me open it in terminal. So now if I go to data report revenue, I get quite a lot of files. So let's see the size of these files. So they are super small. It's like seven kilobytes, six kilobytes, and we have 200 of such files. It would be actually convenient to reduce this uh, number of files. For that, we can use the thing called coalesce. It's the same as repartition, but coalesce uh, we use when we want to reduce the number of partitions. So let's say we want to reduce it to only one partition. So we just want to have one file here instead of having 200. Um, and if we execute now, it says path already exists. So we need to say that mod is over, right? But it wasn't too long. I think it took 26 seconds. So it should be pretty fast. It's, now it's writing the results. Yeah, there is some statistics here, but I think it was finished. Yeah, it is finished. So the results are here. Now let me do this. I need to go. Yeah, and if I do ls h, yeah, so we have one file, 500 kilobytes, and it has all the revenue data for each month, for each taxi type, for each revenue location. So this is how we took this query and put this to Spark. And the thing here with Spark is we wrote the results back to our, well, we pretend this is a data lake. So we wrote the results back to a data lake. It's still a bunch of files. We didn't write the results to a data warehouse yet. So we can operate completely in a data lake. So we don't need to actually go to a data warehouse. This is when uh, Spark comes in handy. And then, yeah, I remember uh, in the beginning, I was talking about when to use Spark and when not to use Spark. And I mentioned that if you can use SQL, then you don't need to use Spark, maybe you can use something else, but you don't always have these tools like um, I don't know, Hive and Presto. And if you already have a Spark cluster, why not use it for executing SQL queries? But then in addition, you get a bit of other things, like you can do this thing, for example. Well, this maybe is not a great example because you can do all these things with SQL, like including union all and all that. 
Yeah, but uh, this is still a good example of how you can use Spark to execute SQL queries on your files in a data lake. So this is all I wanted to cover in this lesson. And the next one is about joins. And I think maybe in addition to joins, I want to spend some time talking about group by. So maybe I will call it differently. So I'll think exactly how I will call it. But actually group by and joins are somewhat similar. So I will talk about both of these things. Maybe I will call it internals of Spark. Well, anyways, I'll figure out how to name it, but I want to talk about different types of joins in Spark and also I'll probably touch group by and see you soon.